The people in Britney's life want to put her back into a conservatorship. That is exactly what is going on and I have no doubt, not a single doubt in the world that that's what's happening right now. All right, babes, what has got me so fuming is the fact that two days ago on June 10th, the absolute demon Daphne Barrick or whatever, I don't know and I don't care, published this article to the even more demonic website, Daily Mail. Britney Spears family say they fear she is on meth and will die like Amy Winehouse. Father of her boys, Kevin Federline, says loved ones are terrified she is on the Breaking Bad drug. The Breaking Bad drug. <laughs> oh. Son Preston says, I hope she'll listen to us before it's too late. How am I expected to believe anything that comes out of Kevin Federline's mouth when he's the one who conveniently wants to move to Hawaii when the child support cutoff age is 23? And both Jaden and Preston are both close to turning 18, which is the cutoff age for child support in most states in the US. You could not be any more on the nose, Kevin. You could not be more obvious even if you tried. I fear she's on meth. I've been praying someone would make it public and that she wakes up. It's terrifying. She is the mother of my boys. Her sons, Preston, 17, and Jaden, 16, are refusing to meet their mother, claiming they have seen drugs being delivered to her house. Her family are scared, with Britney's father, Jamie, telling me he worries she will meet the same fate as English singer Amy Winehouse, who died at the tragically young age of 27. And there you go. There's the reason this article should not be taken seriously in the slightest. When you go to Jamie Spears, the man responsible for keeping Britney trapped in her conservatorship for over 13 years, you don't have any credibility and you don't deserve to be a journalist. We all know exactly what that man did to Britney and you're still willing to use him as a reliable source of information? He doesn't care about Britney. How is that not obvious? All he wants to do is get Britney right back under his thumb. But secondly, not only is that Amy Winehouse comparison completely disrespectful, but it's uncalled for, distasteful, and incredibly insensitive. Having spent time with both families, Amy's in the three years before her death and Britney's over the past year, I can see disturbing parallels. Yeah, Daphne, you did spend time with Amy's family. But what else did you do? When Amy was trying to get better, when she was trying to get clean, you were openly drinking around her. But also, how on earth can you say that you see parallels when you never even met Britney? The only source of information that you have are from these money-hungry leeches. Various family members say they would like to reach out to her, but they claim she no longer depends on their care and is instead now reliant on an entourage of powerful advisors, with those once closest to her unable to get through. Is that, um... Is that supposed to be a bad thing? It's a bad thing that those soul-sucking, money-hungry leeches can't reach her? Oh no, woohoo! Is it such a bad thing when so-called family members of Britney are only interested in using Britney for her income and don't actually care about Britney herself? Oh, Britney doesn't want to talk to them? Oh, that's so horrible, wow. Oh. Mm. All right. But you know what's funny? Even though this is a hit piece on Britney, even Daphne the demon can recognize Kevin's shady behavior. Indeed, she funds the boys' education and then some. Kevin Federline collects around $40,000 in child support from Britney every month. There are considerable expenses involved in looking after the boys, it is true, but he receives more than the US president does, and it's tax free. When Britney says she has spent years funding the lifestyles of those around her, she is right. Kevin's plan is to move the boys to Hawaii, far from her home in Los Angeles, which will only compound her suspicion. As it happens, there is a legal quirk in Hawaii. There, parents must support their children through college until they're 23. Mandatory support ends at 18 in every other state. Daphne? <sighs> I need you to sit down and look me in my eyes right now. How is this to you as a journalist 
not the most giant waving red flag. You literally see with your own two eyes that there's something suspicious going on here and yet you still decided to publish this. When I suggested that Jaden's talent on the piano might be a legacy from his superstar mum, Victoria begged to differ. No. Britney used to yell at Jaden for practicing the piano at her home. He was making too much noise. It was us, me, who encouraged Jaden to practice. <laughs> Shut up! You know damn well you are lying through your teeth about this. I literally have a single clip, one single clip, to debunk all of this. But the real truth of the article starts to come out when they begin talking about Britney's apparent lack of stable income. Oh, I see what this is. You've given me confirmation on something that I already knew. You guys are just worried that your paychecks are running dry. Well, okay. I mean, I already knew it, but to hear it is a different story. It is barely believable giving her vast commercial success, but Britney's father and other family members are concerned about her current financial situation. Why? Why are you worried about her finances? Why are so many of them only concerned about her finances? Britney has had no steady income since 2019 when she stopped her Vegas residency. What are her intentions once the child support payments to Kevin cease? Some family members say they had long assumed that the monthly payments for child support would include money to be put aside for trust funds for Preston and Jaden. They have calculated that, by now, Jaden and Preston should have six-figure sums at their disposal. Family members say they've seen no evidence of these trust funds existing. Kevin is also the father of those two boys! He could be the one putting that $40,000 into a trust fund! Why is Brittany getting the blame for Kevin being an irresponsible father? How about you put that money into the trust fund and not expect $40,000 and then more? Oh my god! He's literally contradicting himself because he's saying that he's worried Brittany might be running out of money but she still supports his lifestyle every single month on time without struggle. And number two, Brittany isn't ever going to run out of money. She's just had a number one single in over 40 countries. Her book was subject to a massive bidding war, which in the end secured her $15 million. And she's been working on a comeback album for over nine months. Britney's money isn't going to run out. You guys are just mad that she's working at her own pace now and you can't tell her what to do 24 seven. Am I right or am I right? The article ends with these words from the wretched man himself, Jamie Spears. Although Jamie has been condemned by Britney and many of her fans for his controlling role during the conservatorship, he believes strongly he's a loving father who did what he needed to do to protect his famous daughter. He says, compare her wellness then and how she is doing now. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more from you. Compare her freedom to the prison that you locked her in. You want to make that comparison? Go to hell. He's literally trying to justify the conservatorship. And you wonder why so many people hate you. This is what Britney was like during that conservatorship, Jamie. I'm sad. That's extra. <laughs> what are you gonna say to that? Bro? Yeah. What? When you go to jail, there's always the time that you know that you're gonna get out. You know. Do you feel out of control in your life? No, I don't feel like it's out of control. I think it's too in control. There's no excitement. There's no, there's no passion. There's no, like, it's just like Groundhog Day every day. After the Daily Mail published this article, Brittany uploaded this picture to her Instagram of a girl being bullied 
and a heart-wrenching caption that is nowhere near as malicious as Kevin deserves. The fact that people are claiming things that are not true is so sad. This may not even be them saying such things because it doesn't make any sense to me for them to be saying that. With Preston saying, she needs to listen to us before it's too late. Do you remember every visit you came to my home, you went into your room and locked the door? I never saw you guys. Jaden played the piano and we made music together, but the day I told him I wanted to see you guys more, I never saw you again. It makes me sad because I tried so hard to make things nice for you and it was never good enough. So you guys go behind my back and talk about me. It breaks my heart and the news is so low. I've always felt like the news bullies me. It's sad because everyone sits back as if that's okay to make up lies to that extent. Why am I told I have to sit back and rise above when they all go so low? Hopefully it is just the news being hateful and Kevin nor Preston said any of those things. Either way, I will be fine working out to throb. But neither Kevin nor the Daily Mail are getting away with this because Britney's lawyer, Matthew Rosengart, has stepped in to say that these claims are false and defamatory. But right after Matthew threatened an investigation, Kevin immediately backtracked like the little lying weakling he is and took to TMZ to slam the Daily Mail. Even his wife posted to her Instagram story about it because they knew they were lying, so now they have to retract the lies so they can keep getting paid. Britney's 2007 assistant, Leah Brand, explaining how the craziest thing Britney did was have a glass of wine at dinner. This Britney is an addict narrative that has been forced down our throats for years is complete and utter BS. The only uh, alcohol or any type of anything that would be considered a drug that was done by Brittany was a glass of wine and we were out for dinner. There was never any drugs in the house. I was there when all the doctors were there. I was there when everybody was coming in, when the people were there for the kids, the mentors, everything. I was there 24-7 living in the house during the time after she shaved her head until the ambulance and nothing was ever brought in the house. There were doctors that came in the house, but that's normal. I work for a family now where doctors come to the house to evaluate things and take tests and everything. So there was never mess in the carpet. There were never carpets ripped out. She didn't even have carpeting that needed to be ripped out. She had area rugs. You don't need to rip out area rugs. So all that stuff is just a bunch of BS. Also, Kevin, how are you going to drag Britney through the mud for her apparent use of substances when you do the exact same thing? And for them to make out that Britney is crazy for apparently having access to knives during her conservatorship when she wasn't even allowed to drink coffee, why isn't the same said for Jamie Lynn when there is literal picture proof of her holding someone at knife point? This is an article from January 26, 2021. This is about Tony H. He was the CEO of Zappos. He had a fortune that was even bigger than Britney's, but what's interesting about Tony's case is this. Tony was pulled into a conservatorship. His brother was made his conservator. Tony had been very adamant and open about the destruction and the trauma that he experienced with his brother. It's the same that Britney had with her father and then having her father moved in as a conservator. One week before Tony dies, articles like this come out. They make him out to be a drug user, a drug abuser. He ends up dying in a mysterious house fire. They said that it was because of his drug use that he left um, flammable items on the stove. One week before the fire that killed him, there was another fire, but that one was only contained to one room. Last thing about Tony's case and why it's so important is because the lawyer that was on this case was Vivian Thoreen. This is James Spears' lawyer. So if anybody knows the tactics and maneuvers for what to do with an estate after somebody dies, it's Vivian Thoreen. So pay attention to these articles and look at other cases of conservatorships where massive estates were absorbed by these professionals. <sighs> okay. I'm somewhat satisfied. The Britney stain in me is still fuming, but she's, she's, she's watered down a little bit, okay? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you all so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!